This is Pastor Andrew Pepiner Jr. And this is Holy Nation Church of Memphis empowering you for life Bible study. And I thank God for all of you tuning in. I don't know if we are on Facebook yet. So just go to our YouTube channel, Holy Nation Church of Memphis YouTube channel, so you can check us out right there and get into the conversation on YouTube. Sandra, I see you out there. Can you hear me now, Sandra? Uh, can you hear me now? I thank God for you, Donna. And now, as you come on, like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe as we get ready to go further into ministry. And while we're getting these things going, I'm going to put a, a friend of, of ours out here, uh, 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 Minister Andrew Knox and New Change. Uh, we love them. They came. They were in concert at our church. Uh, a few months ago. And so let's hear them right now as we go further into ministry. Come on, give Chris Agnew a hand. Can y'all come on and give God a hand of praise? Hallelujah. If you love Jesus, can you make some noise in this house tonight? Hallelujah. Pillar of my soul, oh Lord, you made me whole. El Shaddai, I praise your name on high. Jehovah Jireh, oh Lord, you will
right, all right, all right. We thank God for uh, Mr. Anthony Knox and New Change. We're trying to get this technology straight around here. Again, I'm Pastor Andrew Perpiner. This is Holy Nation Church of Memphis, empowering you for life, Bible study. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. We are trying to get all of our streams and everything going. Uh, I don't think we are on Facebook, but I think we are on YouTube. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Can if you if you hear us on. Uh, let's see. If you hear us on 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 YouTube, um, shout back at us. Let me know how it's sounding. And I think Facebook is down right now. But we, we see a guy. We see a guy. Hey, Zoom. We have Zoom and YouTube. Everybody on Face YouTube, if you can hear me, uh, respond. Sounds good. Thank you, Crystal. <clears throat> Amen. Everybody, listen, you can come to our Zoom link and we can have some great discussion as well. But again, to today, tonight, whenever you're viewing this, we are going to deal with uh, truth and consequences, truth and consequences. And I'm going to open this up in a little bit. But uh, have, have you guys noticed, have you guys noticed uh, that uh, uh, people are, uh, I don't know, uh, when it comes to heaven, hell, um, they have some laxed opinions about it and things of that nature. A lot of uh, ministries don't even say anything about heaven and hell. But we just came out of a session last month dealing with uh, what you sow is coming back again. And we're dealing with principles. We're dealing with laws as it relates to sowing and reaping and, and harvest principles. And even when it comes to balance, balance. Uh, the world is seemingly is out of balance. Jesus came, I believe, to 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 indeed fulfill the law of God, but it also came to set us into a type of balance. Amen. So uh, when we begin to deal with uh, this situation uh, in today's world, uh, we see uh, seem to have more of an opinion. There, there are more opinions of, uh, 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 than truth. Everybody has, uh, they're talking about their own truth. You understand? Uh, they want to talk about their own truth. This is my truth. This is my truth. And, and, and I have found out, I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to know this, that it takes uh, some, some doing to begin to uh, come up with some kind of uh, 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 thoughts about what's truth, not, not what's true, but what truth is all about. So tonight we're going to deal with, uh, in this series, this is part one, we're going to deal with truth and the enemy of truth, truth and the enemy of truth. There's an enemy of truth. And we're going to talk about this, uh, in a moment. We thank God for, I see first lady out there and, and all of you that are out there, Holy Nation family, we thank God for you. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that are watching, those that are going to participate, and those that are praying. God, we thank you for your word. I ask you to decrease me and increase thee in me that I might speak, herald, preach, proclaim, teach unadulterated gospel with power and clarity and revelatory knowledge that somebody may be healed, delivered, set free, edified, and encouraged uh, to go on a little bit further. All this we ask in your son Jesus name. Everybody say amen. Amen. So when we began to think about uh, uh, in today's society, people are more um, uh, um, uh, impressed or more uh, uh, always thinking more about opinions. They value of their opinions more than they value truth. Some say this is because today's culture requires an immediate need 
for information, an immediate need for an answer. Hey, it doesn't even have to be the right answer, but it's like uh, this whole compression that is going on in the universe requires an answer. We are living in the technological uh, 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 culture, and and you know, back in the day, you would have to when you were studying, you would have to uh, look up a book. You would have to vet the author, see who what the author was all about. Uh, what the, what did they study? What their philosophy was? Their experiences were. You did all of this. Uh, then you actually read. Uh, you researched. Uh, we um, even got after we read those books. We got supporting documentation and manuals to go further with that and and after that after that we would come up with some kind of summation some kind of conclusion not in and of ourselves but based upon what we had studied from people that we thought were uh, uh um, <clears throat> not just important or famous but were 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 solid in uh the field of study and then we would take it to somebody to a mentor, a teacher, a professor, somebody like that, to give their expert opinion about what we have we had come up with. Uh, today, everybody just hey, give me a computer. I can get my own data. I can get my own information. I can run some. St I can look at some statistics uh, from some kind of uh, company uh, that is getting paid to develop certain statistics to be. Uh, put the certain bent on it that they want to put on it. I can do all of that. Uh, I can get me some uh, 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 metrics together and come up and arrive with my own opinion on my own truth. They call it truth. So that's that's where we are now. But uh, 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 massive amounts of information. It's easy to access. And now, now that's, it doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are, but truth now has, uh, in my opinion, become a very loose, uh, loosely used word, truth, truth, my truth, your truth, their truth. But what about the truth, the truth of God. So we're going to deal with truth and the enemy. Before we deal with heaven, hell, uh, right and wrong and all that, we got to deal with uh, the foundational principles first, I believe. And that's going to help us on down the line in the next uh, sessions to help us have a solid, sure foundation that we can go on and not do what the world is doing. And that's running off of emotion running off of uh, excitement or running off of uh, melancholy. Just uh, I'm either down or I'm up or whatever. I got good days and bad days and all that. Listen, when you have the truth, when you have that sure foundation, every day with Jesus, as the songwriter said, is sweeter than the day before. So let's, let's look at this. Truth, truth. And, and well, let me give me let me give you some scriptures first, uh, so you can write these down as I go forward. Amen. Uh, uh, First John one six through eight. First John one six through eight. And if if some of you on Holy Nation, that are some of our members that are usually on Facebook, can you pick pick up a phone or text them and tell them to come on over to uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, I don't want anybody to get left behind. I don't know what's going on with the Facebook page, but that's all right. First John 1, 6 and 8. However, I will put it out on Facebook later on. First John 1, 6 and 8. Ephesians 5 and 8. Uh, First Thessalonians 5, 4 through 9. First Thessalonians 5, 4 through 9. First John 4, verse 6. First John 4, verse 6. First Kings 17 and 17. First Kings 17 and 17. And I think, let me see, this should get us uh, going. This should, and then and do this one. John 14, 5 and 7. John 14, 5 and 7. So what is truth? What is truth? Uh, anybody on, on, on our Zoom 
uh, uh, sanctuary, would you like to take a stab at that? What is truth? Does anybody, can anybody tell me on our Zoom platform or on our uh, YouTube platform? Put it in, uh, in the chat. What is truth? Can anybody help us with that? You can unmute your mics and throw it out there. Let's, let's talk. What is truth? Anybody? Well, here's what some, some philosophers said. Truth uh, possesses characteristics from honesty, characteristics from good faith and sincerity. In general, it, an agreement with fact or reality in particular, truth. Uh, um, in, in, in its secular definition, truth has, listen, no single meaning that professional philosophers and scholars can agree upon. Mm, isn't that something? Truth seemingly is elusive to the world. Uh, but but uh, your 17-year-old probably has come up uh, with their own definition of truth. Amen? Amen. Uh, Marana, you say, it's Jesus. Truth is Jesus. Amen. Truth. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And Jesus is the light. Amen, Miranda. That's good. And and we let's now let's let's kind of try to unearth that and, and, and get a little deeper into that as we deal with truth. What is truth? Philosophers have an ongoing debate right now regarding truth, such uh, as what constitutes truth or how to define and identify truth. We, you know, we have the court of law and we have our, our many different judges and lawyers and, and people go to court uh, in an effort to find out the truth, amen? But truth is a universal topic that we all seek to know and understand, truth. Do you believe the world would be a better place, y'all, if it knew the truth? That's something to think about. I don't know if the world would be a better place if it knew the truth. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because uh, it seemingly is like the world does not want to even know the truth. They just passed, well, a bill has just been set up in uh, Florida where uh, it, 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 uh, for our schools, see, a lot of this stuff begins in the educational realm uh, 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 as far as opinions being uh, migrated into our children's curriculum and things of that nature. But in Florida, uh, they just passed a bill, not a law yet, but a bill uh, that, that is saying that uh, when it comes to school education that uh, people should not uh, 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 dealing with gender bias. You know, uh, don't say anything about a person. Are they gay? Are you gay? Are you, or challenge people as it relates to their gender or their gender preference, things of that nature. In other, just don't say anything about it. Don't say anything that is relative or will begin to have an inference of trying to find out, check this out, what the truth is. Isn't that something? So it starts like that. It starts like that. Took prey out of school. It starts like that. And things began, the fabric of our country, the fabric of our belief system begins to unravel. And a lot of times parents don't really understand what their children are being taught. They understand they're taking English and algebra and algebra one, two, trigonometry and literature and physical science, biological science and health. All these things, you understand they're taking those things, but there are some things that are not on the curriculum that are being uh, sown into our children's hearts and minds. What is truth? What is truth? So, so here's the thing. Uh, we, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go to First John one and six. First John, as we uh, began to uncover um, some possible characteristics of truth, 
truth. Uh, so before I say, do you believe in heaven? Do you believe in hell? We know what the Bible says about Jesus talked more about hell than he did about heaven. But some kind of way, some kind of way we get in. And even though the word says certain things, then as men uh, and women that are in this world, we began to give our own opinions and commentary of what God was talking about or what the word really means and things of that nature. So let's look at 1 John 1 and 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. You do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, let me say the light, put that in the chat, the light. But if we walk in the light or live in the light as he is in the light, we have, here comes fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanseth, cleanseth us from all sin. Uh -huh. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. In the Bible, in the Bible, y'all, when you start studying in the Bible, light and darkness uh, are frequently used in place of holiness and wickedness or righteousness and wickedness, holiness, light and dark. When you see light, we're talking about holiness. When you see darkness, we were talking about wickedness. There, there is no, I, I know we're trying to get and, and deal with shades of gray, uh -huh. shades of gray and things of that, that nature. But, 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 but listen, uh, uh, in, in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, there is hot and cold I'd rather you be hot or cold. Either way, I can use you. I can use you. Uh, but if you are lukewarm, if you're gray, uh, uh, the Lord can't deal with us with that thing. You have a decision, beloved, to make as it relates to your stance, uh, as it relates to uh, the Lord. A lot of times we have, the enemy has made us uh, make the word religion a bad word and here's the thing uh all, all of us are religious in areas whatever they are we are religious in certain areas somebody watches uh, uh sports religiously some people watch soap operas religiously uh, uh we are religious in certain areas but when it comes to serving god there is nothing wrong with religiously serving a true and living savior amen so so religion and spirituality those things those those have become opinions that people want to slap back and forth like there is something wrong with them the thing is uh do you do truth do you do truth do you do uh uh uh, uh living for the lord do you do that correctly amen so check this out uh truth first thing we want to deal with is truth is uh um i get i i gave a stab at some characteristics of truth truth is pure truth uh needs nothing added to it truth truth doesn't need any help it needs no additives it needs no additives it is the truth so ephesians 5 and 8 13 let's go there ephesians 5 8 13 are there any questions as we go forth y'all got to jump in on youtube on zoom y'all just got to jump in i'm gonna talk until y'all jump in that's how we're gonna we're gonna do this because i don't want any dead air how about that so if you have just jump in there just jump in there or uh, if you know how to put the little hand up put the little hand up and i'll acknowledge you amen so so ephesians 5 and 8 says this for ye were sometimes darkness but now are ye light in the lord walk as children of light for the fruit of the spirit is all goodness and righteousness and truth goodness righteousness and truth 
providing what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship, listen, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness or wickedness. Have no fellowship with that. I know uh, uh, I got, just got through preaching uh, Sunday about Jesus w went to the party and all of that. But you can go long as you're, here's the thing, long as your mission, you go to the party and long as you don't lose sight of your mission. Uh, people need the Lord at the party. People need the Lord wherever you are. As long as you don't lose sight of the mission. But what happens is in this in this scripture it says, and have no fellowship. See, when you began to have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, you have lost sight of your mission. But rather reprove them. Reprove them, reprove them, for it is a shame even, listen y'all, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved, reproved, that Greek word uh, uh, of reproved mean, mean uh, elinko. Uh, Elinko or uh, reprove or another word rebuke uh -huh. or here's another word that's better correct uh, here's another one um, uh, bef to, to rebuke uh, to reprove to correct listen takes evidence don't be trying to correct somebody and you didn't see them do anything wrong you somebody you heard some somebody told you something and so now you're going to rebuke them and you're going to try to chastise them and reprove them and you have no evidence but you need to have evidence amen you need to have evidence uh or here comes knowledge if you're going to rebuke you're going to reprove something you need to have evidence and knowledge so 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 uh, uh, uh so it says but all things that are reproved are made here comes manifest by the light we're getting into the truth now we're getting into the truth what is truth what is truth uh, it's made by the light for whatsoever doth make manifest is light Whatever makes manifest, whatever makes it, uh, 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 sh shows it for what it really is, it manifests. It actually comes to life. Reality, manifestation is truth. There is, here's, here's something that you want to know. Uh, Matthew Hill. Hello, Pastor. Hey, uh, Brother Matthew Hill. Praise the Lord. So glad you come into the sanctuary today. Amen. There is no confusion in truth. If you find yourself in a confused state, a confused situation with somebody, a group of people, there is um, no truth there. There is no truth there. That's what I want to say about that right now. We're going to delve on into it a little deep in a second. But there is no truth there. There is no confusion in truth. In seeking truth, there must be more than rebuke. And correction but there must be as I said an exchange of knowledge to bring uh, the light you got to have knowledge to bring not listen your opinion in and of itself alone does not qualify as knowledge that's your opinion knowledge comes knowledge is proven knowledge remains consistent no matter who delivers it it is still and will still be the same thing whatever day in the midnight hour early in the morning knowledge is light and it will never change just just like there is either darkness or light today we try to make differences as i said in the shades of gray because there is no knowledge or fact but just opinion, feelings, and innuendo. Right now, we are in the, in the world that that they're they're just that that people don't want to agree on that something is fact. Oh my God! It, 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 it's it's just uh, you know 
the only thing is resolute that what goes up must come down. The, 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 the law of gravitation. Or as you sow, so shall you reap. But it is also a fact. And we get into the truth. See, the word of God is the inerrant truth. It is truth. It is written by men. But it is inspired by God. In other words, it wasn't man's idea to write the Bible. It wasn't man's idea to put certain things in the Bible. It was under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost from God that inspired uh, uh, carnal uh, uh, men to do something great for, to pass along. Have you ever been inspired before by God? Uh, the only somebody that cannot understand what I just said is somebody that has never been inspired by the Spirit of God. So here's the thing. That's why we have to be careful who we listen to. You need to know those who, who, who labor among you in, in the doctrine. You need to know the ones that labor among you, period. You need to know the ones that are teaching your children. You need to know the ones, the school system that you are, are, are entrusting, not just trusting, but you're entrusting the future of your children into the hands of systems. And you need to know something about those systems. Here's the thing. You say, well, I'm going to change this. Yeah, listen, you can't change the system. I'm sorry. That's, that's just a true state of effect. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna gamble your child, your grandchild's future on wasting time trying to change something that is not going to be changed. That's just, that's just the name of the game. It is what it is. It is what it is. And so you, you, you need to find the best system that you can find because it's that important. People are homeschooling their children and grandchildren because they understand that our systems, a lot of them, are corrupted. The newer the system, most of the time, the, the, the less of the corruption, the newer the system, the older the system, a lot of times it just, it is what it is. And I'm telling you what I know, uh, from, from, from experience. Uh, I'm not telling you what my opinion is on it. I'm telling you what I know from the inside out. All you got to do is follow the money and you'll find out what you're dealing with. Amen. So listen, First Thessalonians five four and nine. So we're dealing with uh, this 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 that 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 truth is pure, nothing added, no additives necessary. What you think about it doesn't mean a thing. Truth stands alone. First Thessalonians five four four and nine. Any questions or comments right now as I go forward? First Thessalonians five. Four and nine. Y'all just jump in. Even those on YouTube, you can just click in and I'll read it. Uh, we got a, maybe a, a 30 second delay or whatever, but we'll come back to it if you uh, want to be heard. Anybody? All right. Let's see. First Thessalonians 5, 4 and 9. Now, I am Pastor Andrew Propina. This is the Empowering You for Life Bible Study. And we're dealing with truth and the enemy of truth, truth and the enemy of truth, truth and the enemy of truth. Uh, so first Thessalonians five, four, nine reads, but ye brethren are not in darkness that, that day should overtake you as thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night. Listen, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, just, just understand this. You are not of the light. You are not of the light. You put it, put that in the chat. I am not of, uh, of the darkness, but I am of the light. You are not of the night, but you, and you are not of the darkness, but you are of the light. I am not of the darkness, but I am of the light. Amen. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober mm -hmm. for that they sleep, sleep in the night, 
in the remember that night the wickedness when people are doing wicked things when people are doing damnable things when they, when when they are just not doing anything at all they are asleep see when you're in the light you're going to be vigilant when you're in the light you're going to be woke and when you are woke you're going to be providing action you're going to be doing certain things that are pleasing unto the Lord. You're going to be doing certain things that are be, that will be a blessing, not just to yourself and to your family, but that will be a blessing unto God. Y'all understand? So here's the thing. Uh, verse 7 says, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord. God did not uh, anoint us. He did not draft us to wrath. He didn't draft us to be uh, the grim reaper. He didn't draft us. When we are talking about rebuking people and reproving them, we are talking about in love correcting them, in love bringing to them uh, uh, components that will assemble together to become truth. Truth is big. Truth is solid. But truth is not just uh, one thing, Jesus was is the way, the truth, and the light. And Jesus is is so uh, 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 has so many layers to him and what he does. The word Jesus is the word of God. Amen. So so the psalm then is this: that if any listen pretend to be friends, the scripture is saying, uh, with God or or, or uh, to have received. Mm -hmm, holy and gracious influences from him you know you have pretenders that's why the world a lot of times is hard on the church and religious things and they because there are uh, uh pretenders in the church yeah jesus had 12 disciples and one of them betrayed him so so hey uh that's just what it is we get you it's an open invitation anybody can come and join the church which if the devil had his choice where would he okay you said if the enemy had his choice which one do you think he would go to uh he would he would he go to the party or would he go to the church would he go to the party or would he go to the church? That's just a question. Y'all can put that in the chat. Come on, uh, Elder uh, Cooper. Let me hear from you. Yes, sir. I'm really enjoying the Bible study on tonight, talking about truth. And I know as you was talking now, you was throwing all these science terms again. You know, I believe that God speaks to me through science because as you were speaking, you know, uh, it comes to a point where you have to first originally deal with something. Is it a fact or an opinion? And uh, opinion is usually what I think and a fact. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. And the fact is something that has been proven. Uh, and then you go into what is the truth. So you have to separate your opinion from what the fact is. And then you move from fact and you try to figure out, okay, does the fact match the reality? And a lot of times what happens is uh just because realities can be altered that's why god had to uh, give us four gospels four different perspectives uh matthew mark luke and john of the same account mm -hmm. there's not one point you know a lot of times we try to find contradiction to see if any four of them contradict the story of what's going on <laughs> but you can find no contradiction because uh through what they speak you find truth so the truth matches the reality in four different perspectives that bring yeah. forth the story about what Jesus did for us. And then, you know, he goes on and then he says, you know, I'm the way, I am the truth, I am the light. And no man can see the Father except by me. So therefore, who he was talking to already had a belief or a belief system, as you was talking about, you know, these systems that we're talking about. He was coming and what he said challenged the people's perspective, challenged what they grew up to believe. 
And even as we deal with Black History Month, you uh, said those of us who are woke. Yeah. And a lot of us think that we woke because we go back to our traditional roots, <laughs> not realizing that that was before Jesus was introduced to the Africans. So therefore, we pick up habits and we pick up traditions and customs that our old ancestors used to uh, do, which were not godly whatsoever. Come on now. So... so now we have to deal with the whole thing of what is true, what is not true, when Jesus has been telling us all along what is true, and we have to somehow just, you know, and then we deal with the whole part of what we want to do. Uh, we try to justify our wrong with the truth, and that just not, just doesn't work that way. So, uh, you know, as far as what the truth is, we have to realize that our truth is not within us, but the truth is in God. And we have to base, uh, pretty much take the reality that we have and find where God's truth lies in our own reality. Amen. Amen. I love what you said that 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 uh, the, the 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 harmony of the four gospels uh, it it does not bring contradiction, but it brings addition. Uh, it, it in other words, it brings support. So the truth uh, from everybody uh, has a. Per, see, we, we're dealing with not just opinion right now, but we're dealing uh, with perspective of the same thing. Uh, so, so if we're dealing with a true, uh, true situation, say, for instance, uh, you got four uh, witnesses to a, mm, a, a murder, four witnesses to a murder. Somebody is going to say... Uh, uh, one thing, the other person is going to say another thing, but another one's going to say another thing, another person, another person is going to say another thing. But when you layer those together, if the tr if if they all be true, they will all complement with their own perspective uh, perspectives of what they saw, and it will make the truth even stronger. It it will it will c come out to be the truth. Amen. Any other comments? Anybody else uh, out there on, on Zoom or uh, as we go forward? I love this. I love this. Uh, so 1 Thessalonians 5 and 4, uh, it says that, of course, that if any pretend, as I said, the pretenders to be friend with God uh, or to have received holy and gracious influences from him and still leave uh, or live wicked lives. If you still, if there's no change, you still live a wicked life. The Bible says that they are liars, they are guilty, and that is literally impossible to pull off. They are uh, practitioners of lying, and whatever they profess is not sincere. So that's why uh, it is so important that we we know who speaks over us because you can eat junk food and gain weight and and it will make you unhealthy and that is the truth or you can eat uh good food live food things of that nature that will help strengthen you so you have to be careful of your intake you have to be careful what you let come into your ear gate you have to be careful what you see you have to be careful all that because all of these things that you intake will eventually affect what you say and it's not what comes into the 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 body that defiles a person but it's what goes out of the body so oh you say oh i can listen to anything i want to i can see whatever i want to i can do yada 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 yeah but what's going to happen is over a period of time What's in you, as the old folks say, is going to what? It's going to come out of you. Amen? So we're dealing with the truth and the enemy of truth. I got to hurry up because I got to get to this enemy, uh, this enemy of truth. Because, let's go, First John 4 and 6 says this. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth or that word uh, in the Greek, the althea or the fact, the spirit of what's factual and the spirit of falsehood. Uh, one uh, 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 translation says that falsehood, Greek word, 
plainer or wandering or the spirit of error or uh, uh, when you're wandering in the in sin, that's because people that are wandering in sin, they have come in contact uh, and have uh, 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 is, and following the spirit of error. Because we know the truth by the light and illumination, we can begin to figure out, listen, who is guided by the spirit of fact versus who is guided by the spirit of fiction. You, you got people that are walking around uh, just talking fiction. They're talking about what they're feeling. They're talking about uh, what they think. They're talking about their opinion. And if you began to see the truth is not afraid to be challenged. The truth is not afraid to be challenged. If you have truth on your side, you should not even hesitate about being challenged. You know that this is the truth. You know this. And, and you don't worry about being challenged. But fiction, fiction has an issue with being challenged. So let's remember, truth is pure. Nothing added. No additives necessary. Now let's go to 1 Kings 17 and 17. It looks like we're going to get to uh, the, the enemy of truth, uh, maybe a piece of it. 1 Kings 17 and 17. The, wi uh, the widow of Zarephath and her son were going to eat. You remember this story? The widow of Zarephath was going to eat. She was picking up sticks and she was getting ready. She was in the midst of a pandemic and she was just going on. She had run out of food and she was getting ready to cook her some meal and she and her son were going to eat it and die. That's what our proclamation was. And and the, uh, uh, the prophet Elijah uh, came and he said, listen, uh, give me uh, something first. Give me something first since you plan on dying anyway. Uh, give, give me some give me some food. And uh, and I promise you that your oil and your meal will not run out. So verse 17, and it came to pass after these things that son of woman, uh, the mistress of the house fell sick and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elisha, this prophet, what have I to do with thee? O thou man of God, art thou come unto me to call my sin, check this out, to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son. See, she telling on herself already, you know, wait, wait, I know I did something and now it's catching up with me. Have you ever been there? Oh, you know, something happened and you're like, oh Lord, it's coming. Well, right, listen, nobody is perfect. God understands you and he understands your heart. You need to be able to come in line with the truth of God's word and live and not die. Listen to this. So, and it says, uh, verse 19, and he said unto her, give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into the loft where he uh, abode and laid him upon the, his bed and he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by laying or uh, slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times, the Bible says, and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come uh, into him again. And verse 22 says, and the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came in, into him again. And he revived and Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, see thy son liveth. The word of God will never let you down. And the woman said uh, to Elijah, now by this, I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. Now, Elijah had ministered to this woman. She was down to her last dime. They had no food and things of that nature. And he had been staying with this woman. The oil, her, her food never ran out. But it was only until this episode that this woman of God, the woman of Zarephath, says uh, uh, that now I know 
that you are a man of God. So here's the thing. Truth is pure, but truth is a perpetual allegiance. Truth, truth. People will gravitate towards the truth. They will gravitate. It's a perpetual allegiance. It will never leave you alone. It will never forsake you. Elijah told uh, the people that it wouldn't rain for three years and six months. All these things. He had done all of these things. He went uh, after that. God sent him to the brook and, and, and the ravens fed him in the morning and in the evening until the brook dried up. And from that point, he sends him to, to the, uh, the widow of Zarephath's house. And he's just constantly, constantly making ways out of no ways that which even kindles the prophet's faith. And that's what we got to understand. When we're dealing with truth, you stay in the light. Stay in the light. Stay in the light. Stay, I can say it one more time, fella. Stay in the light of God's word. In the midst of blessing by God, she experiences temporary misfortune, truth, and the same allegiance that blessed her and her son with food continues to give her a miracle to raise her son from the dead. If he did it before, he will do it again. We just have to constantly, we cannot allow anybody to 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 sift our testimony you know you you know certain things can happen and you know it was god that shielded and protected you you know it was god that uh, uh, uh allowed you to get that job you know it was god uh you knew you didn't qualify for certain things and god allowed them to happen and 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 all of those things protected you and your children you knew it was him but as life goes on, as life goes on, we, it seems like the world begins to, uh, the interaction with the world, we, we begin, our testimonies began to get watered down. But stay with the Lord. Truth is a perpetual allegiance. Let's go to John 14 and 5, and then we're going to jump down here to uh, this um this enemy of truth. We need to know what the enemy of truth is before we leave here this evening. Uh, so John 14 and 5. Thomas said unto him, Lord, talking to Jesus, we know not whether thou goest and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Miranda tells us the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It is, it is that, that that's what uh, the world, that's what the, the, the Pharisees had against you. He spoke with so much certainty. He spoke with so much truth. Uh, uh, the enemy, the enemy, and you have to understand who the enemy is. The enemy is the, the, the entity, the individual the group, the organization that denies the light of God. The enemy, that's your enemy. That, that, the, that, 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 does, that, that, that rather live in the gray of the world, the, the shades of gray and in darkness. God calls it darkness. There, there is either light or darkness. That's the enemy. You need to understand what the enemy is because a lot of times we allow friendship to help define uh, to us what truth is. And that's not true. That, 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 that's not where it is. The word of God defines to us, the spirit of God defines to us what truth is. So here's the thing. Um, uh, verse 7 says, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him truth is professing accurately no opinions necessary god's word it stands truth is professing accurately accurately precision truth that's what truth is thomas confessed his ignorance listen and in this in this uh a passage and jesus plainly explains again what is happening Jesus had so often told the disciples that he was going to die. 
He told him he was going to be, he was going to die and that he was going to be resurrected. But they still, listen, these disciples, these, these boys that were with Jesus 24 seven, they still did not understand or comprehend or hear and appreciate the truth that he was telling them. You, you, you know, uh, 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 the, uh, people in the last days, people would rather hear a lie than the truth. Lie to me. Lie to me. Don't tell me the truth. Uh, uh, am I a good person and you've been doing all kind of damnable things? No, you're not a good person. Well, you heard, now you heard my feelings. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to bind me up uh, and keep me from speaking truth? To you, but that's what we have to do. We have to understand and understand that the enemy will 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 try to bind you uh, with with, keep, with having you withhold the truth. Amen. So uh, that will still uh, they will still entertaining carnal kingdoms that Jesus would reign over. Uh, their truth was that Jesus would uh, be an earthly. Prince, this is what the disciples' truth was. Uh, in their truth, they could not comprehend the reason why Jesus had to die. He was going to be riding around here. He was going to be an earthly prince. He, they believed he was the son of God. And, and, and now this man is talking about, I'm going to die and I'm going to be resurrected. they like, he, he don't really understand what he's saying. But understand, here comes when we're dealing with heaven, when we're dealing with hell, when we're dealing with uh, uh, truth and consequences, when we're dealing with sowing and reaping, the truth is the word of God is resolute and it means what it says. John 18 and 33, uh, we're going to skip there. Let's go down. Let's, let, let's do this. What is truth? What is truth? Uh, 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 truth is a prosecuting activity. Uh, if you if you read John that John eighteen and thirty three, I'm gonna let y'all read that on your on your own time. Uh, that's where Pilate is dealing with Jesus uh, in the judgment hall, and Jesus was was talking to him. They were have a, having a kingly conversation, uh, one 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 uh, 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 prince to another. And, and they, were, they had an upper level conversation and Pilate could understand uh, that Jesus was not just another prophet. He understood that uh, based upon how he spoke, how he responded to Pilate's questions and things of that nature, how he uh, deflected. He did not lie, but how he deflected and did not answer certain things. He understood who he was, and 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 then so uh, uh, that 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 discourse went on. So truth is a prosecuting activity. Uh, so uh, here's where I want to uh, jump into for the next three or four minutes. What is the uh, we've been talking about truth, and I need y'all. I need somebody to stab at this. I need you to put it in the chat. What is the opposite of truth? Can anybody tell me? Hit your hit your mic. Unmuted, uh, put it in the chat uh, in YouTube. This is uh, Holy Nation Church of Memphis Empowering You for Life. I am Pastor Andrew Pepiner, and we thank God for you as we are dealing with truth and consequences. Tonight is part one dealing with truth and the enemy of truth. And what I'm asking now is what is the opposite of truth? If you have truth, what is the opposite of truth? Anybody? Come on, you Bible scholars. What is the opposite of truth? I would say that the opposite of truth is a lie, Pastor. <laughs> the opposite of truth is a lie? Is a lie. Or the lack or, or the lack of knowledge. Um, oh, keep talking. You getting there. <laughs> okay. Or uh, the lack of knowledge. Okay. Ella Cooper say the opposite of truth is is the lack of knowledge y'all agree with him uh gg says false the opposite of truth is false and i'm gonna help you with that one the opposite of what is true is false you have a true 
and you have a false. That is, that is, that's what that is, true and false. But when we deal with truth, truth is a weightier matter. Because check this out. What is true today does not necessarily have to be true tomorrow. Uh, what is true in 2021 may not be true in 2024. So what's true is not as weighty and consistent as the truth. Amen. Uh, Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the truth. He never changes. Uh, if he did it, hallelujah, for uh, the, the man at the pool, he'll do it for you because he is the truth. If he healed, uh, uh, if he raised Lazarus from the dead, he can do it again. Amen. Because he is consistent. Uh, anybody agree with uh, Elder Cooper? Anybody else? Okay. Uh, let's, let's do this. I, what is the opposite of truth? And the opposite of truth, ready, drum roll, is ignorance. The opposite of truth, truth, is ignorance. See, truth is the light. When you're in truth, you're in the light. When you're, when you're out of truth, uh, you're in ignorance. You're, you're in darkness. You, you don't know. You don't know. Ignorance. Now, ignorance is not a bad word. Ignorance literally means what? You don't know. You don't know. Uh, if somebody, now, uh, if somebody says, uh, seems like you're ignorant when it comes to this matter, that they're not talking about you. They are, they are telling you the truth if you don't know about that situation. Now, if they go and go across the track and say you ignorant, then they may be talking about you. Ignorant, and, and we're talking about ignorance though, okay, okay? So, ignorance is the opposite of truth. Now, should Pastor, be, yes. Can, can I add this to that? Yes. Because I know a lot of times, even with ignorance, uh, you know, they always say that the opposite of faith is fear. But even the opposite of faith is the lack of knowledge as well. Because when we lack knowledge, when we lack information, then we don't have the ability to activate our faith that causes the truth to be able to work in our lives. So, oh. when, you know, and even when, uh, you know, even with our reality and everything that goes on uh, in our life, uh, it's beautiful that we're able to use the truth to speak to our reality, yeah. to make our reality align with what God said in his word. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Let's go forward. I want to finish this up right quick. Uh, listen, ignorance, and I, let's do this briefly. Ignorance can appear in three different types. Factual ignorance, obje object ignorance, and technical ignorance. Factual ignorance, object ignorance, and technical ignorance. Example, uh, it's a fact I don't know uh, what street uh, President Obama lives on. That's a factual ignorance. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fall fly off the bat. If you tell me I'm ignorant about that situation, that's a fact. I don't know. Uh, object ignorance. Uh, uh, I would not know what a cancer cell look like if I was, uh, looking at it under a microscope. I wouldn't know. That's, that's an object ignorance. I don't know anything about that. Now, technical ignorance, absence of knowledge of how to do something. It's a fact that I do not know how to drive a tank. I'm, I, don't, I don't have that technical skill. So therefore, I'm ignorant when it deals with that. I can't tell you no truth about uh, operating a Sherman tank. I can't tell you any truth about how to identify uh, cells under a microscope and, and, and all what causes those things to happen. I can't tell any truth about that. So therefore, I'm ignorant. Uh, uh, so we are all ignorant, though, uh, about one thing or another. I don't care how smart you are. So here's the thing. Ephesians 4 and 17 says this. Ephesians 4 and 17 says this. 
This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, uh, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past uh, feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness and greedy. This. They they were void of all saving knowledge. Uh, they sat in darkness and loved it rather than the light. You got some people that love to be in the dark. They love to do wicked things. There there are some people that uh, have placed themselves in unfortunate situations that they they are ignorant. They and, and some people like to be ignorant. They want to play ignorant. Uh, well, you know, if I don't, I don't want to play with the Lord now, I don't want to keep going to church and I'm still doing what I'm doing because, you know, God know my heart. Yeah, God knows your heart and God is a righteous judge. He's a just judge and he's going to judge us. He's going to judge us. I, for, 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 I want you to read Hosea 4 and 6 uh, because there is a cost for ignoring the truth. There's a cause. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of God, of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth. Listen, there is no mercy. There is no knowledge of God in the land. God has an issue with you, Israel, uh, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery. They break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore, therefore shall the land, listen, this sounds like us, therefore shall the land mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish uh, with the beast of the field and with the fowl of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another. Here it comes. Let no man strive nor reprove another. Try to correct somebody for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall into the day and the prophet also and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night in the wicked hour, in the wicked post, uh, posture. And I will destroy, listen, thy mother, my people are destroyed. For, we, you know, we, we always read this one, uh, uh, verse six, but all of this other stuff, precursor, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Uh, they are destroyed, that Greek word in the Greek means they are destroyed for not knowing they are destroyed for being ignorant uh-huh uh, because they have here comes rejected knowledge it's not that the knowledge is not there it's not that the light is not there it's not that they don't know better but they have literally america whomever chosen to be ignorant and in the dark as it relates to the things of God. And then God says, I will also reject thee. Here it comes that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law, I will also forget thy children. Both priests and people rejected knowledge. Y'all hear that? Both priest and people like, like, like priests, like people. If the world, see, that, that, that's why we got to deal with this. We got to deal with the heaven. We got to deal with the hell. We got to deal with what is truth, T-R-U-T-H, and consequences. Consequences. There is truth and there are consequences. Uh, just because the constant nobody is preaching about consequences does not erase the consequences 
Just because nobody is not standing and raising the truth does not mean that that truth is silent. Amen. Press it down to the ground and it still will rise up. He says, they forgot the law of God, neither desired nor endeavored to retain it in their mind. They forgot it on purpose. And they even quit testifying of how far God brought them. The Bible says, if you forget God, he will justly, God will justly, he's the just God. He will justly forget you and your children. Mm-hmm. And you say, well, Pastor, they're kind of hard. They're kind of hard. You, you're hitting kind of hard. Uh, that's the Old Testament, isn't it? Hosea, well, let's do this. Go to John 3 and 31. Go to John 3 and 31, and we're going to finish right here. John 3 and 31. Oh, my God. I'm way over. We're usually out at in an hour. John 3 and 31. But I want to get that. I got to do this. God is pushing me to this because you need to know the truth. You need to be able to defend the truth. It doesn't need defending, but you need to be able to uh, uh, tell it correctly and have confidence uh, in it. John 3 and 31 says this. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly. And speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth. And no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set, uh, uh, hath, 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 hath set, uh, he hath, that has received this testimony has said to his seal that God is true. For he whom God has uh, sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. Verse 35 says this. Uh, the father loveth the son and hath given all things unto his hand he that believeth on the son hath everlasting life and he that believeth not the son shall not see life but the wrath of god abideth on him for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting or eternal life. So here's the thing. Old Testament, New Testament supports the Old Testament. Old Testament supports the New Testament. If God said it, and, and he said, well, let's, let's see what Jesus said. Jesus can't, is not going to speak against what the Father said. If you don't receive Jesus, if you don't receive Jesus, if you don't believe in Jesus, you will, the Bible says in the New Testament, you will not have eternal life. You will perish. And we're going to deal uh, back with those things next week. Listen, I thank God for you. I thank God for you. I hope uh, something was said to enlighten you, to prompt you to want to know more about what's going on uh, as we deal with uh, heaven and hell are they still relevant? Heaven and hell, are they still? Is truth still relevant? The truth of God's word, is it still relevant? I know it is. I know it is. That it brings about that. And there, you can't talk about heaven without talking about hell. You can't talk about truth and not have certain consequences uh, thereof. Amen. And so listen, we thank God for you. And I want to, I want to challenge each and every one, but we, I want to pray right now, but I want to challenge you while I put this up. I want to challenge you to sow a seed into ministry tonight. I want to challenge you to sow a seed into ministry tonight. And, uh, it is on your screen. Um, and, and sow a seed, sow a seed, uh, sow a, uh, if you can in this year of 2022, sow a 
$22 seed offering in one of these categories. Givelify Holy Nation Ministries, uh, Cash App Holy Dollar Sign Holy Nation Ministries, or or you can mail it, hold, uh, make it out to HNC, uh, and you can mail that, or you can send it to our website, Holy Nation Memphis dot org holy nation memphis dot org and you can do it that way and we will uh uh, uh, uh most definitely put that where it needs to be that it does its best job uh, to support ministry we thank god for all of you we thank god for all of you uh, uh that are uh, uh following us like share subscribe uh please subscribe on our youtube channel if you have not uh, when teachings come, you will uh, it'll let you know about it. And we, Lord says the same, we will most definitely be up on Facebook. But this teaching will also be on Facebook uh, tomorrow uh, that, that you might be able to go out there and check it out as well if you like to be on Facebook. But we thank God for you. Continue to come on to our Zoom channel. We want to have some good discussion. Thank God for those that have said something tonight. And uh, you know, turn your turn your turn your camera on so we can see. It. And we're gonna we just I'm just getting excited about seeing people. How about that? And so I thank God. I thank God for you. And so we're gonna we're gonna go uh, further uh, into um, uh, getting out of here. And I just thank God for all of you. I see Elder Bunton out there and other friends uh, that are out there. And I just thank God for you. Uh, praying for us as we pray for you. I want to uh, uh, not forget that um, First Lady uh, is our um, supervisor for Tennessee Central, and she will have her women's conference on the, I think it's the 23rd, um, and we thank God for her, and we want everybody to come out Jackson, Tennessee, I think it's the 23rd, uh, um, next Wednesday. So come on out, uh, be blessed. And I want to say this, uh, before we go, everything, and I mean, everything is going to be all right. Hello everyone. Thank you for visiting us on social media. Listen, if you are looking for a place where you can get the word of God for your everyday living, Holy Nation Church of Memphis is the place you need to be. Visit us on our social media. Pastor Andrew Papiner is always teaching the Word of God. Uh, our Bible study is at 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. Hey. And then on Sundays at 10 a.m. You do not want to miss it. There is a word in the house just for you, for your everyday living. Also want to encourage you to sow a seed. We do ministry here at Holy Nation, and this is good ground. We go out into the communities, and we believe in reaching the families. Uh, that is the parents, the children, the grandparents. But we believe in reaching into the community and sowing back and sowing into ministry. Just go to Giveify on, on, on our website. I think the information should be there at the bottom. Go out, sow a seed. This is good ground. We look forward to seeing you at the nation soon.